Okay, yeah, so thanks thanks uh, for Kinfolk, to Kinfolk for having me here. Um, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, so uh, I founded Polar Signals um, last year, and uh, actually just yesterday we announced um, our first uh, kind of set of products. Um, and that's ultimately um, what I'm going to talk about, but uh, kind of the open source parts of it. Um, if you're if you're interested, we can talk about um, what we do at Polar Signals um, that is not open source as well, but uh, that's not for this meetup. Um, so yeah, this is Polar Signals Open Source Edition. Um, as Lexi already mentioned, um, I've been in this ecosystem for quite some time. Um, I um, still the Kubernetes um, tech lead for special interest group for instrumentation. Um, I'm a Prometheus maintainer. I am a maintainer for the Thanos project, as well as uh, one of the creators of the Prometheus operator project. Um, those are just, uh, maybe some of you know these projects, maybe some of you don't, but um, essentially these are all projects in the observability slash monitoring space in the um, cloud native uh, kind of landscape. And um, what we uh, started focusing on at Polar Signals, or at least the, the very first thing that we wanted to first uh, fo focus on is um, essentially performance profiling and um, a really specific type, type of um, performance profiling that we'll dive into a little bit later. Um, but before we dive into that, those specifics, I wanna make sure that we all have kind of a common understanding of um, profiling, what profiling means, um, how we can use it, et cetera. So just kind of building um, building a, a common ground so that we all understand um, the later parts of the of the talk. Um, so profiling um, at its very core is essentially uh, our ability as engineers to understand how our programs behave um, down to the line of code um, that um, causes some behavior. So typically that means uh, the ability to understand uh, memory usage or the way that the CPU is being utilized um, or potentially even the way that uh, reading a file blocks your, um, your program from continuing to do something. All of these things can be understood through profiling. And profiling is uh, nothing new. This is, has been kind of a, um, a tool in our toolbox for a really long time. Um, but um, it's a really powerful one. And uh, as, as such, there's, there's so much that we can do with this data. Um, and just because the, the kind of cloud native computing uh, landscape um, is really heavy on Go, um, I want to focus on Go in this talk as well, um, or at least the parts that are specific to languages at all, um, I want to point out in Go because I think that probably within our bubble has the has probably the, the, the biggest reach. Um, and so Go um, has profiling built into it, into the runtime. Um, sometimes um, this is not the case with some languages, then uh, profilers are an add-on in some way, but in Go it uh, comes as part of the standard library. Um, and specifically uh, what that also means is that uh, it uses a standard that was created by Google. I think that's maybe an obvious choice for Google creating Go, um, but uh, I think it's actually a really awesome choice and we'll see later why that is the case. Um, Pprof is essentially just the um, file format that, um, that a Pprof format is saved in. Um, and these are just served by HTTP endpoints in Go. Um, again, this is all done through the Go standard library. Um, and in Go, uh, you have a couple of uh, profiles that you get out of the box. Um, this is extensible, but for the overwhelming majority of um, use cases, these are probably going to be enough for, for you. For, for most of my use cases, they have been. I, I think I've only used a custom profile once or twice. Um, so uh, I think the, the obvious ones are uh, CPU time. So in Go, the way this happens essentially is that you hit this HTTP endpoint and uh, Go starts collecting samples about um, where the CPU is spending time in terms of your program, right? Um, 
it, and it does this for uh, by default a period of 30 seconds and it does measurements a hundred times per second by default um, and it essentially looks at um, where where your CPU is spending time so that's how we can understand CPU usage um, so these are sampled right and then um, memory usage or um, heap and allocations uh, are also taken care of by the uh, Go runtime. And uh, what we typically see when we take a heap profile in Go is uh, we see uh, the representation of our heap just after the last um, garbage collection run. Um, so essentially, this is done so that we don't see um, a bunch of trash, metaphorically speaking, um, in, in our profiles, but the actual memory usage. And then allocations are vaguely um, live, essentially. Um, and then the, all the other profiles are effectively um, stack traces and understanding which stack traces created a thread, for example, or where um, or the, the, the stack traces each of our Go routines are in right now, or which stack tra traces have led to a blocking behavior, that's the block pro profile, or which um, stack traces um, have kind of uh, held a contended mutex. That way we can understand um, blocking behaviors. So that's kind of what you get out of the box in Go. Uh, but as I said, this is entirely extensible um, and it's a common format. So this is not something that is necessarily specific to Go in any way. Um, and just to, because I've I felt like, um, and I've um, heard this from a lot of people, uh, profiling seems really intimidating to a lot of people. Um, I wanna show you um, a really quick demo of, um, of profiling some code. So let me change to my terminal. I believe you can see that now. Um, let me know if you don't. Um, so we have this example um, application um, under our polar signals GitHub org, org but um, you could write write up something up um, really quickly yourself as well. Let me sh just show you really quick uh, what code is necessary. In Go, um, you could really do this with a one, one or two lines of code if you use some um, globals, but my recommendation would be um, to not do that. Don't don't do globals. Um, Really, all you need to do is um, register all of these uh, HTTP handlers onto some HTTP MUX and then um, start the HTTP um, server. And probably you already have a, um, an HTTP server. Maybe you're already using Prometheus metrics, for example. Um, uh, and so you could just register these on there as well. And as a matter of fact, a lot of uh, Go programs already do this. So maybe you, um, there's nothing new here for you. Maybe you already have all of this um, and you just need to ma start making use of this data in, in new and exciting ways. Um, and so let me just show you real quick what uh, profiling this application would look like. So what we've got here, uh, let me go back one more time. Um, just to create a little bit of noise in our um, profiles, we're going to calculate the Fibonacci sequence starting with the 1 millionth number just to get our CPU heating a little bit and um, heat us up in, in the cold that we have here in Berlin um, and uh, do a bunch of memory allocations uh, so we can see those as well. So if we start our program now, we can see it's starting on 4080. Um, as I said, really, literally all you need to do is um, curl these in endpoints and just save them into a file. You could also immediately call this with the Go uh, PPROF toolchain, but I do like to um, save my uh, profiles into a specific, specific file. And then all you need to do is use the um, PPROF tooling to um, look at this data. Uh, and when I do this, I need to change my Sharing again, so let me do that. Uh, here we go. And when you do that, you can see here our allocations 
we see a, a very small amount of allocations are happening in this path, but really the overwhelming uh, um, allocations are happening here. And so hopefully uh, kind of this example showed you that there's no magic happening here. This is um, really once you've understood this, these tools a little bit, um, there's really nothing, nothing scary about this. Um, and so let's go back to my presentation. And let me stop calculating very high Fibonacci numbers. Um, so yeah, um, there's nothing fundamentally hard about this. And um, really, I hope that I hope I showed that um, if anything, going away from this talk, I hope um, I kind of lowered the bar of profiling your applications um, and showed you that this can be really easy. But um, to show you why we, as Polar Signals, for example, kind of chose pprof as a format, um, I want to take a little bit of a deep dive into into pprof and see why it's such a cool format. So as I said earlier, um, pprof uh, was initially developed at at Google, um, and so it's not a huge surprise that it's um, used by Go. Um, but what I think is uh, particularly cool and that, that has been somewhat novel in this um, space is that this is language agnostic. There's nothing specific about Go in pprof formats in pprof profiles. Um, it's really just a protobuf definition, and we can generate Rust profiles from this. We can generate Python profiles. We can generate Ruby profiles. Insert your favorite language or runtime. Um, it's totally possible. It's just a file format. Um, and so I think this is really exciting because it allows us to have this common exchange format that everybody can work with. Um, and um, that that just may, that that just means that we can build common tooling for all of these um, awesome languages and runtimes, and so diving a little bit deeper into this um, format, we 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 roughly have um, two things here. As you can see on the slide, um, we've got samples, and these are effectively all the measurements that we that we were talking about earlier. So. Um, which part of our program is holding how much memory or how much, how many CPU cycles are being spent here. Um, and then the rest is vaguely speaking metadata. So location um, and function, et cetera, all of these are kind of metadata describing the, the surroundings, uh, the, the source code that this is actually um, happening in. Um, and what's really cool here is that um, because these are kind of hidden away from the samples, these can be consistently generated by processes of the same binary. So what that effectively means is that if I start my API server um, multiple times and take pprof profiles from each of these, it means that um, the location um, and all this metadata is actually equivalent. So it means that really all we need to uh, all, all that's different between these two profiles are the samples. And this is really cool, um, and we'll see later why. Um, as I said, all, all of this other stuff is vaguely speaking um, metadata. But let's zoom in um, one last bit um, in terms of what this actual um, proto looks like. Um, so we've got um, our type and unit um, describing what each profile represents. So in terms of um, in terms of CPU profiles, this could be uh, CPU and nanoseconds. So the nanoseconds spent um, on a particular part of our code, um, or space and bytes for heap or count and allocations. Um, so these can all kind of be used to describe what um, this profile represents and the samples then are the actual measurements. And as we can see, each sample reference, uh, references a location, which was part of the metadata as we saw earlier. So that's kind of how we can uh, then take these multiple measurements and potentially even compare them across profiles. Now, um, if you followed us, um, the announcement that we made yesterday was that we, um, as Polar Signals, 
um, released a continuous profiling product. Um, and uh, don't worry, uh, all of this is based on open source software and I'll show you later. Um, but what does continuous profiling actually mean? Um, so uh, to do that, let me walk you through um, a story and maybe you're, you're, you're familiar with this. If not, then you're, you're about to be. Um, what we're seeing here is a graph over time of our memory usage. And what we're seeing is that uh, our memory usage grows and then um, suddenly drops and a new process um, is created and the same thing happens over and over again. And um, if you've seen a graph like this before, then you probably know that what we're seeing is most likely a memory leak. And what's happening is that our memory is continuously growing up until a point where um, our operating system is not allowing our process to allocate any more memory. Um, so that could be because we've limited the amount of memory a process can use, for example, with containers. Um, or uh, quite literally, our hardware has no more memory available. Uh, and so the operating system decides to rather kill this process than have the entire operating system crash. Um, so this is what is commonly referred to as an oom kill. Um, the uh, operating system essentially protecting itself, right? Um, but what's particularly annoying um, about oom kills is that we tend to only uh, figure out that they have happened after they have happened. And so um, that means that after this particular moment in time, we really have to wait again to take um, multiple memory profiles um, to understand how this memory uh, has uh, behavior has changed over time. And so continuous profiling is really just the act of continuously taking these profiles over time um, so that we can truly understand these things um, over time. And this is not a fundamentally new thing. Google has written about this before, but what is uh, somewhat new is that there is kind of a movement um, for new open source projects uh, kind of being created in this space. And that's exactly what we did as well. Um, and in the very beginning, when we uh, when I decided that I wanted to start a, a, a continuous profiling project, I was looking at uh, the format. What what um, I tr I strongly believe that for any observability signal, and I believe anything that allows us to understand the operational aspects of our applications better is an observability signal. I think what's really key is open standards, and so I went um, and looked at the PPROF. Um, standard, and it turns out that uh, this is a really awesome fit for continuous profiling. And the the Go diagnostics documentation actually kind of give away some of this. Um, and again, this is not particularly um, surprising given that Google has probably um, invented this this format with just this in mind. Um, so. Part of the, a couple of excerpts that um, I thought were really interesting when I uh, kind of was um, researching this, um, the Go documentation says, you may want to periodically profile your applications um, and you uh, may want to do and save that over time and then potentially automatically um, analyze this information, right? And so without actually saying it, uh, Google has essentially described um, continuous profiling. And so um, having decided on this format, um, we created the uh, continuous profiling project uh, ConProf in the open source. And roughly speaking, um, it does exactly what we just talked about. Um, it periodically goes to these HTTP endpoints um, and all the HTTP endpoints need to do is serve PProf compatible format uh, profiles. Um, and ConProf then saves those into its um, like special purpose-built time series database that is based on the Prometheus uh, time, time series database and um, allows you to query that over time. Now, um, that is uh, already sufficient for the umkill uh, scenario that we talked about earlier. But um, over the past couple of months, we, we felt like it 
um, when we developed our product, um, we felt like there's so much more that is possible with this really awesome format um, that we really should not uh, miss out on. And there are really three really key things that uh, we we thought um, are really interesting. Um, the first one being the ability to merge all of these profiles into one. Um, the reason why this is really cool um, and interesting is that it allows us to take all of these profiles, potentially even from different processes, um, and look at them holistically, essentially get a single report of what is common across all my services, across all my processes, sorry. It does have to be the same kind of um, process. So only my, all my uh, API servers I can compare to each other. Otherwise, it will um, be a quite literal um, apples and oranges comparison. But um, that, that, that is really cool. And um, then the next one is now that we have this data over time, we don't actually need to pick specific uh, timestamps anymore. We actually can, uh, we don't need to go manually and uh, obtain this data anymore. We already have it when we are wanna know what has happened from this timestamp to this timestamp, right? We can go right ahead and query it. Um, and then ultimately, um, because we have all of this data, there must be some more interesting analytics that we can do on this and we'll talk about that. Um, and so uh, essentially what we, what we used to have is we had our metrics, right? Um, where we could see our um, total heap usage of our processes um, and with our um, continuous profiling, we can now actually understand what has happened between our timestamp three and our timestamp two. Previously, we could only say, yeah, my, my heap has changed um, by one megabyte, but now we can actually go and say, tell me in terms of my code, what has caused this behavior? Um, and so these are questions that we were just fundamentally incapable of asking because we just didn't have this data. And then because I think uh, it's just visually so much more uh, understandable how um, merges work, the, the ability to combine all of these profiles over time essentially allows us to see what is common across all of my processes over time, right? So that why this is really cool is because the memory usage, for example, over time that is common in all of our uh, all of our profiles means that if we are able to optimize away some of this memory usage, it means that for all of time of our processes, we're going to lower the memory usage. And so that ultimately translates into um, less cost of our infrastructure. And I think uh, we would all probably benefit from paying a little bit less to our cloud providers um, for resource usage. And one particularly interesting thing about merges um, as we were developing this, um, I think is really cool, is that merges, because of how the PPR format works, are associative. And um, what this effectively means is that there's no particular order in which um, uh, merges need to happen, and they can also happen in batches. So that means that it doesn't really matter how many profiles we want to combine to get a holistic view. Um, we can just do that streaming. Um, and so uh, that's really powerful because we can take all these like potentially gigabytes or terabytes of data and combine them into a single report to be representative of a single version of our application, for example. Um, these are just things that we weren't able to um, see before continuous profiling. Now, the very last thing that um, I think, um, I think maybe because of, uh, if you know me, as I mentioned in the, um, in the beginning, I'm a Prometheus maintainer. And uh, one thing that struck me really early um, was that all these types and units really sound a lot like metrics to me. And so one thing that I think is really cool that we can do with these profiles, because we have all these samples within profiles is we can, um, we can extract metrics from this um, and we can look 
at how our um, our applications behave not only on a um, on a total level, not only uh, diving into individual profiles um, because of a memory peak or something, we can see the um, the change in behavior of our programs over time. Um, and this is just time series are um, communicating so much more information at once um, than any individual sample could ever do, right? So this allows us to truly understand our the behavior of our uh, programs over time. And I think this is a really powerful tool. Um, it's going to be a really powerful tool for people to optimize their code and really understand why this is, um, uh, why this is happening this way. Um, and so ultimately all of this is about our ability to um, answer questions that we were never uh, able uh, to answer before because we simply didn't have the data. And because we have all of this, uh, we can actually do all of these uh, kinds of optimizations way faster than we were uh, before. Um, as I said, um, everything that I talked about today um, is part of the um, Comprof open source project. The, the very last thing, the metrics part, um, is not in Comprof yet, but it's also not in Polar Signals, so there's nothing that we're, that we're hiding here. Um, uh, so I, all I communicated here was kind of the idea that I think is really cool and that we're certainly working on. Um, and this is, I promise, the only slide with commercial content. As I mentioned, we launched yesterday with our um, invite-only, like private beta uh, continuous profiling product. Um, if you're interested in that, check our website out. And then we also launched a, a kind of neat um, free profile sharing service where you can uh, take profiles that you um, that you may have taken manually and upload them. The way that we imagine this to be used is that um, we know that people tend to attach PPR profiles to GitHub PRs or issues, but they tend to take screenshots of it. And so it's really hard for someone to, who receives those to see the surrounding context of that. Um, and so we think that's really useful for that purpose. Uh, so that's really it for my talk today. Um, if you, uh, as I said, if you want to chat more about Polar Signals, I'd be more than happy to do that on Twitter um, and check out our website. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, so actually, yes, uh, we do have uh, quite a lot of questions. And just so we get it on recording, maybe I will ask the questions and then you can answer them one by one. Because they're in the That chat. sounds great. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so the first question is from Peter. Um, and I will not attempt to say the last name. I'm so sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, how expensive is it for Go Runtime to answer the profile query and in parentheses, heap, go routines, et cetera. Are some profiles cheap and some expensive? Yeah, I think that's a really awesome question. And uh, yeah, there, there are certainly um, some, some differences depending on the type of profile. Um, the C CPU profiles are certainly the most expensive ones um, because they effectively halt your process um, um, to take measurements. Um, pretty much all the other ones in Go, um, they're not free, but they're very close to being free. And so um, I would recommend to continuously profile everything um, and specifically look at whether CPU profiling has any impact on your infrastructure. And if it does, um, there are uh, pretty simple um, sampling techniques that you can use so that you, let's say, only uh, profile 5% of your infrastructure. Um, and if uh, profiling has, let's say, a 1% overhead um, in profiling overall, then that's um, a minuscule overhead that you're paying in total to have this kind of data, right? Um, so sampling is effectively the answer if it's too expensive. But in our experience, um, we haven't actually had the, the case of even CPU profiling being overly expensive. It's been really in the thousands of a core um, in terms of price that we're paying for this. So we at Polar Signals, um, I mean, I, I would uh, not expect anything else, but um, we, we literally uh, profile every single process we have. Um, 
So, yeah. Um, okay, actually, I'm going to, um, uh, because Peter had a few other questions, I'm going to kind of uh, put them together. How often would you recommend to scrape profiles? How much data would you, uh, does, uh, would it take to scrape heap and CPU profiles from 100 servers every 10 seconds? And where does ConProf uh, store profiles? So, um... Let me start with the later one. Um, so Conprov um, has its own um, kind of uh, storage, but uh, we kind of built a distributed version of that storage as well. So um, Conprov has sort of two, two modes that you can run, one where it actually stores the, um, the data locally in its time series database or uh, sends it off to kind of a, a remote storage. Um, so that's um, that's also the kind of part that we're also offering, but you can also run that part yourself if you want that, if you want to. Um, and um, you can think of one profile. Um, it really depends on how large your your application is, but most profiles are under a hundred kilobytes in size. And so um, you can take that in terms of uh, multiplying that by your uh, number of processes. So a hundred kilobytes, um, times 100, that would be 10 megabytes um, every 10 seconds. Did I do that math right? I think so. I was about to say, um, I don't have to do it on, on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, ultimately, um, it's, it, it's, pre it's pretty cheap in terms of um, collecting it, and then even storing it is not, is not all, that, um, all that huge. Okay, um, I, yeah. there's two more questions. Arthur asked, is it possible to merge profiles with ConProf or only with uh, Polar Signals continuous profiler? So um, all the APIs are available in, um, in, in ConProf. Um, it's just in Polar Signals, we've uh, kind of created a, a, a comprehensive UI experience around it. All, all of the functionality is open source though. Um, and you you can totally hit the API endpoints um, to to produce the profile and then look at it uh, using the typical Go uh, pprof tooling. Cool. Um, and last question from Christian. Um, I know it is a very open question, but in general, at what size of an application does profiling uh, it make sense? Or in other words, what applications do you expect Polar Signals to be? used for profiling in the future? Um, I think that's a great question. Uh, I think it, it really depends more on the performance characteristics of your application. Um, so we, we have a couple of applications that are really tiny, just a few hundred lines of code. Um, and we profile even those because ultimately profiling comes down to the resource usage and the performance of that code. Um, and uh, as it turns out, most code uh, can be optimized with a few lines of code uh, being changed. So it really doesn't matter uh, in terms of the size. Any size um, code base can can benefit from profiling for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think, uh, oh no, I have another question from Christian. Um, <laughs> do you have an option on profiling client applications? Does it only uh, make sense in CI tests? And does it make sense uh, as telem uh, telemetry? Um, so with with clients, it's uh, more complicated, but um, it certainly works. You could um, you, you could do the profiling locally, and then, as I said, send it off uh, to a remote storage. That could could totally work. Uh, that would probably require a little bit more work than, let's say, the built-in Go. Um, uh, like standard library things, but it would definitely work. Um, and then uh, I do think it makes a lot of sense to do this in CI, but it's not a replacement for uh, for also doing this in production. Um, it's much like uh, metrics tracing or logging. You you really want to do all of this stuff in CI, um, but definitely also want to do it in production because you're never going to be able to reproduce exactly the same kind of situations as you have on production. Uh, and those are really the interesting ones, right? Like if, you're, if your CI is fast, but your production is slow, um, 
Well, that doesn't really help us, right? Um, we want to know in production is our um, is our stuff uh, using the, the amount of resources that we want to, and is it does it have the right latency, for example? So uh, I, I think you sh you should do it everywhere, and we do do it everywhere.